nine to 12. So children at this age, cognitive development is uneven. They can see things as good or bad. That, that tween moodiness erupts. They may test their parents' attachment to see if they are loved or exhibit extreme compliance. This is where the term good adoptee and bad adoptee has come into play. They may withdraw from adoption related events or feel insecure about talking about this in groups. Questions are more abstract. The whys are deeper now. They are face to face with the losses. So tips, ask open-ended questions, reassure them they can talk about this, reaffirm sameness and differences. Except anger is easier to have at this age than sadness. Anger is actually the easiest emotion to have. I use the anger wheel. It talks about what drives anger. There's always feelings underneath it. Avoid putting a child on the spot about being adopted. Mention adoption and adoptive families and foster families are one of the many ways we build a family. And they need to know there are 7 million other adoptees. So losses that tweens face. They start to really question, why couldn't they keep me? Why couldn't they? Loss of being a normal family. I wish we could be like other families because they're aware of me and others. They want their peers to like them. They want to feel a sense of belonging. They don't want to be different. So it's really hard for them to go out to dinner with their family, go on the bike ride. Whatever it is can be a lot for them because what it's doing is it's triggering their loss. As long as a parent is having a conversation about this, naming it to tame it, they'll be able to process it and feel less alone and understand that people are curious. Will I be teased because I'm adopted? Who do I look like? My identity? Where did I get my eye color from? And this is when we're not giving them information tween time can become a more difficult time for them. So we want to do this as soon as possible. Who do you look like? How do you handle if someone asks you if you're adopted or is that your real family or is that your foster family? You know what to do. You've got your toolbox. Why couldn't they keep me? I know why. I get it now. I need to see others who look like me. I need to be with friends with other adoptees. Really, really important. Here are phrases that tweens need to hear over and over and over. You are loved, you are lovable, you are valuable, you are worthy. You are attractive, that feeling of feeling wanted. You are deserving as everyone else. You are smart, you are capable. You can make and keep friends. You have common traits with your peers and your family. You are loved for who you are, not what you do. What are common statements? We go from questions to tween statements. I hate it when people stare at us. We wanna help them make sense. Sometimes people stare because they're not used to seeing a mixed race family, they're curious. I had one family that actually stared back. They all just did a stare. My real parents would let me stay up till midnight. Common at this age, my real parents wouldn't make me not have my cell phone for a week. It happens, it's gonna happen, just so you know, it will happen. I know you think about your birth parents, we wanna acknowledge that. That that saying right there, uh, they're thinking, they are thinking about that, they brought it up. I know we wanna validate, I know you think about your birth parents and wish you could be with them. And I want you to know, so we're not correcting them, we're connecting. And I want you to know that all parents, must help their children get a good night's sleep and can't always stay up till midnight. There's a comic called the Adopted Comic. Very, very good to print out for tweens. The adoptee's house. You're not my real mother. I don't have to do what you tell me. If my real mom was here, she'd let me do whatever I want because she loves me more than you love me. Stomp, 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 stomp. Then the non-adoptee's house. 
I hate that you're my real mother. I don't have to do what you tell me. I wish I was adopted. If I was, my adopted mom would love me more than you love me. And she would let me do whatever I want. Stomp, 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 stomp. It's all relative. Helps tweens gain perspective. More statements. And when they're faced with the losses, they're gonna make comments based on how they've interpreted their story. If it hasn't been told otherwise, they're going to blame themselves. And they're also recycling. Remember, they're recycling. You may have told this to them before, but they're still believing that there must have been something wrong with me. There was nothing that you did or said that made your birth mother make a plan for adoption. All babies are good babies who need parents to take care of them. And your first mom was not able to do that for you. You are not to blame for that. You have always been worthy. You're loved for who you are. It was due to the circumstances in her life at that time that she was not able to parent any baby born on your birthday. This is why we want to do the shame witch again. Because shame is directed towards the self. Guilt is directed towards the behavior, distress for the person. When you have a child who says, I'm all, I'm just bad. There's something wrong about me. You say to yourself, this child is living in some shame. I need to connect and then correct their thinking about themselves. Because if we do not, excessive shame will prevent the development of guilt. And this is based on research because individuals who are rated high on measures of shame are rated low on measures of empathy for others. Why? Because they live in what's called a narcissistic wound. It's like a bubble that surrounds the child and in the bubble is a mirror. And in the mirror, they see their bad self, everything that's wrong, deficient, whatever their interpretation of how they see themselves. I true, saw myself as a crumpled up piece of paper. That was the image I had for myself. I had to go in therapy and reframe that about myself because I felt like a piece of garbage, literally. I needed the shame, which badly, it's, you are lovable. The reason your parents left was not your fault. That was a very hard time and frustrating time in their life. You mattered and we love you. We will not leave you if we get frustrated or angry or upset. See, we're validating the pieces. We will manage our feelings together. Your mom and dad have support to help us get through tough times. You're going to have to do the shame witch again. Again, recycling information, recycling processing, because parents get confused. I thought we went over this when she was eight. Time to go over this again. You will be very surprised. Kids, it's like they hear the story when they're six or seven or eight. Like when they're 10, they're like, wait, what happened? And you know, as a parent, you've explained it probably maybe four or five times, but they're thinking about it differently. They need it to be told again, maybe more pictures, more sitting down, showing them more stuff. Be wise tools is a tool that came from the Center for Adoption and Support and Education. Be brief, always ask the child which one they wanna use. So a be wise tool is how to respond if someone asks the child or you when you're in the grocery store because your child is darker skinned than you and you're white, is that your child? We're still evolving in society. Is then you look at the child and you, you go over this with the child. I'm going to teach you a tool. We all need to learn this because, you know, when we get those questions in the grocery store or at CVS, we need to know W-I-S-R-E. We can walk away. We don't have to answer a stranger's question. We can I ignore them or say an I statement. I don't want to answer that right now. S, you can say something, share something that you've prepared. I was adopted. What, what is it that you want to share? And E is educate them about adoption. Did you know there are 1.5 million people adopting the United States? I'm not the only one. So be wise. And it doesn't have to be in this order. When this happens and the parent is there, they model for the child. Oh, excuse me, sir. Hey, hon, which one do you want to do? W-I-S or E? 
why do I say this? Because it's not the parent's story to tell. This is very personal. This is very private. And what we want to do is reinforce for kids a sense of control and choice. Having choices gives children, builds their confidence, their self-esteem, gives them a sense of control. And children who've been separated because of trauma, traumatic incidents, their world does not feel in control. So we want to use as many tools to provide and instill in them, you have a sense of control of your world. And with the parent, if they say, I don't know, mom, you pick one and you, you know your child, that's private. It's a tool. All families want to learn this. And then there's another tool called tip tool, whichever is easiest for the child to remember. Tell, you can tell them something. Yeah, my birth mom was not able to take care of me. You could ignore and you could say, you're going to keep it private. That's private. Um, you're not subject to answer any stranger, anything about your personal private story and information, because it is emotional. It is psychological. About this. We want to help them make good, wise decisions for themselves.